Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Praise your name, hallelujah. Glory to your name, O God. Hallelujah. Bless your mighty name, Lord. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to thank you. subjects from grace, faith, restoration, or redemption, all things that are relevant and pertinent to today's walk through the kingdom. The kingdom is very important as we live in the kingdom of God. The Bible says we're in this world, but we're not of this world. So sit back and enjoy this edition of Victoria's Word Christian Center's broadcast just for you. See you in a little while. 
He's still on the throne. So we have to declare that, hallelujah, that he has not left the throne. Amen. Because of what goes on, he's still God. He's still God. He's still God. Amen. Co-Pastor Cedar Walker, Co-Pastor um, of the Victorious World Christian Center, along with my husband, Leslie R. Walker. And I'd like to welcome you to our portion of our Bible Tuesday Bible study here at Victorious World Christian Center. And I want to thank you for coming and joining us along, joining, joining us and taking your time out and your sacrifice. You, you could be doing something else, but I thank you for watching us on tonight. Amen. So let's go into the word of God. Father God, we thank you right now. We praise your name. We give you glory and give you honor for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for this day. We thank you for keeping us all day long, protecting us from all danger, seen and unseen, covering us with your, with your blood. And Father God, we pray, Father God, for those, Lord, that are continuing dealing with COVID-19. Father God, we pray that your healing, your Bible Gilead be their heal that you would heal them right now, God, in the hospital, at home, wherever they are, Father God. Heal those that lost their loved ones, Father God, um, to this COVID-19. Heal their hearts, God. Oh, God, mend them, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Deal with each and every one that have dealt with financial setbacks, Father God. They have dealt with um, the, the tearing up their, their family, being torn apart. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord and Lord, because we know that there is nothing too hard for you. And we, Father God, we pray, God, that your perfect will be done in all of this, Father God, that your will, that we be in your will, God, that our, our lives will line up with your will, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, have your way, God, have your way. Save and set free and deliver, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, right now, and we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. We want to come to you. We're going to talk to you about victory in our confession. It is so important that we confess the word of God over our lives, over our situation, over our circumstances, over our children. It's important that we have faith in what God has already done and what in the victory that Jesus has on the cross. Our confession, what we say, we, we have, it's, it's so important that we watch the words that we say. How forcible are right words? How forcible are right words? When you speak right words, it can force things to change around. It can force situations to turn around. How forcible are right, are right words? We have to stop just reading, but we have to read the scriptures with an understanding and to know that whatever I read, that it's a purpose why it's here. And God wants me to take that into my spirit so I can confess these words over my life, over my children's life, over my marriage, over my husband, on my job, over our church. So over the situations, everything that's going on in this world, God has given us that authority to confess the word of God. Everybody can't do that. Everybody don't have that authority to do it. People can confess the word of God, but it's authority and the faith that's behind it. God has given his believers to take to have that authority, those that accepted him and made him Lord over their lives. So we're going to um, talk about victory in our confession. Our first scripture that we're going to go to is Hebrews 10 and 23. 10 and 23, it says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. I I declare that God is a faithful God. To lay, to profession means to lay claim, to affirm, to state positively, to declare openly, to maintain as true. The word of God we know is absolute true. And we have to proclaim, we have to, we need to shout out the word of God. We need to let people that Jesus still is on the throne. Amen. And so hold fast to what God has declared over your life. You have to take what God has declared over your life. Whether it looks like anything is happening or whether it seems like you're just standing still, you have to profess the word of God over your life. When you, when you confess the word of God, you are declaring that the principles, promises in God's word belongs to you. 
It belongs to you. It belongs to you. It belongs to me. It's when we make that word personal and we make that word our own. And that's when that, that comes in having that relationship with God. That comes in knowing that he's your father and you're his child. That I can go to the father. We have to make this what he has given us in his word. Just it's, it, this is this is has been written just for the scene. It is we just have to make it just that person. I tell you people, you know, we, as y'all know, I'm you know I'm his favorite child, a special favorite child. So I have to believe that y'all say, oh, you know, she's she's real arrogant or whatever. No, I just I need to believe that because when situations and circumstances come up in my life, I gotta know that that God cares about me. He cares about what I'm going through. He cares about how I feel. So we have to make this thing personal. The word of God goes from being a logos to a rhema. It becomes a lie. It becomes a living word for every situation, every circumstance that I encounter. It's a living word to turn that thing around, to turn it around. Hallelujah. I'm declaring that he who promised He's reliable. He's a sure God. And faithful to his word. He's a faithful God. You know, we we, we depend on, uh, you know, um, uh, mama now. We depend on auntie. We, we can depend on our girlfriends. We depend on the stimulus um, packages, the care package, whatever they call it. We depend on all those things. But we got to know that God is a sure God. He's a, cre he's, he's a creator. He is. He created everything. He's still on the throne. He's still on the throne. So we have to declare that, hallelujah, that he has not left the throne. Amen. And regardless of what goes on, he's still God. He's still God. He's still God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah said in his word that, hallelujah, that his word would not return back to him void. But it'll accomplish what he pleased, a prosper the thing that what he said. So every word that God has spoken, God is faithful to make it come to pass. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said if I if it be spoken, it, what is the scripture says? Um, ain't think of it right now. Hallelujah. That he spoken, he'll make it good. He'll, he'll make it good in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I can't think of it right now, but I'll think of it before it's over with. Amen. Amen. Let's go to, hallelujah, Romans 4 and 19. Hallelujah. The word of God is, is sure and true. Hallelujah. I guess I don't have no help to remind to, uh, so I can give me what that scripture is, but that's all right. It'll give it to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And um, Romans 4, 19 says, in 20 and 21 says, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Now, if God can resurrect Abraham's dead body and Sarah's dead womb, he can resurrect the deadness in your life. Whatever the situation is dead, he can do just that. But I, I love to think about Abraham is that Abraham chose not to stagger at God's promise. Choosing that you have to make a decision. You have to commit yourself. You have to focus that regardless of what I see happening or what I don't see happening, I'm going to choose. I'm going to make a decision to stand still. I'm going to make Abraham made a decision not to, not to stagger on God's promises. You have to choose to keep confessing God's word over your situation, over your life. You have to choose to keep believing and to keep moving forward. We have to choose. We cannot look to the left, to the right. We got to choose to stay focused. We can, your path is not, is not back there. Your path is going forward. 
the path is going forward. God ain't a God just keep going back, switching back and forth, back and forth. One day you, you say, the other day you ain't say, one day you don't know. No. We have to be stable in the word of God. We got to choose. I'm going to choose to, to, to um, stay on course. I'm going to choose to stay on path. Because I got somewhere to go. We got somewhere to go, people. We got some dreams. We got destiny. We got somewhere to go. Amen. Amen. We cannot let doubt and fear steal your destiny. You can't let you can't let doubt and fear you steal your destiny. Because a lot of times, God, when God has his, he has a plan and purpose for us. But when he set us on our path, he don't give us everything. He give us more as we go. So we got to go by faith. As he told Abraham, you'll know it when you when he told Abraham to leave leave his his country. He said he he didn't he didn't tell him everything everything that he would encounter. He didn't tell him everything. He said you'll know it when you get there. And a lot of times he does not give us everything that we need to know. We'll know by the Holy Spirit when we get there. But we have to move forward regardless of what the hiccups that, that come the um. The, the you know holes that we may fall in, you know we sideline, but he will give us he, he will get us there by his word. We just have to choose to believe, choose to trust in God, choose to rely upon his word because his word is absolute truth. As I said earlier, they will not return back to his board, but it will accomplish what we please and prosper in the things which he said. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's the scripture I was saying. If he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. Amen. We got to choose to believe that. That God will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever ask or think. According to the power that worketh in who? The power that worketh in us. The belief that we have, the faith that we have. God's power is working on the inside of us to do far above that we can ever ask. We just got to have the faith to believe because without faith it's impossible to please him. It's impossible to please God. God is not pleased when we doubt him. God is not pleased when we um you know we have disbelief, unbelief. He's not pleased with that. He's not pleased when we don't obey when we disobey him or we go into rebellion because we don't have the faith of God. Amen. Amen. There's, you know, you know, we don't go through in disobedience and rebellion when we're following the word of God. We don't get off somewhere. We don't get off somewhere. We don't get off confessing the word of God. We don't get off believing the word of God. We got to get back on track. We got to get back to being committed. We got to be like Abraham that we choose to believe God. Amen. That we have to let his word become a strong tower that we choose to run into it. His word, is, his word is the name of the Lord is a strong tower where the righteous run it in it or say. So we got to let his name become our strong, strong tower that we can run into it. Because if we focus on God, we know that he's a way maker, he's a miracle worker, and he's a deliverer. That there is nothing too hard for our God. There's nothing too hard for our God. We, get, we have gotten so much of saints of God themselves, have gotten so much in fear. That we're afraid to go back to church. Preachers are everywhere falling by the way, so they, they, they're afraid to go back to church. We're waiting on the back seat. But your faith is in the back seat. I understand we don't need to be back hugging and kissing and all of that stuff, but we need to be back in church. We need to be back in church. We need to have the faith of God that we can follow the social distances, whatever the Holy Spirit would give us, the how we to go back, wash our hands, take our temperature, whatever we need to do. But we need to get back in church. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't let fear overtake us assembling ourselves together. Zoom is wonderful. Facebook is great. Um, YouTube is wonderful. But we need to pray, Lord. Lord, give us what we need. Give us direction. Give us instructions on how to get back to church that we can come together as a body. And I know sometimes people... They, you know, they don't know what social distance is. They may think social distance is two, you know, two or three inches. But, you know, those that you have to pray for and say, you know what, stand back. Praise the Lord. Love you. Amen. I just got off a little bit. But let's go to 2 Corinthians 12 and 10. <laughs> Amen. 12 and 10. Glory to God. 
Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians 12 and 10. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because we just had our second, you know, we do our Bible studies at home, but Sunday service at church, and we've been in there our second Sunday. And I just thank God. I am excited. I enjoy being back into, into the house of the Lord. Amen. So 2 Corinthians 12 and 10, it says, I'm going to read out, out the Good News Version. It says, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecution, and difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I am strong. Now, you know, the only way you can say this is that you got a revelation from the Lord to say that you really, really know, you really have the faith of God to say that all things don't work together for my good, all of my pain, all of my insults, all my hardships, persecutions, difficulties, everything that I go through is going to work out for my good. You got because otherwise you think somebody crazy when they say that. You know, that would be, you know, this. I, I like this scripture, I, you know, I love the word of God, but you know how you have your favorite scriptures, this would be one of my wouldn't be in my top. It used to not be in my top ten. Because when I think of the scripture, I was thinking, oh God, of all the horrible things. And so it was like, oh God, I don't know. I don't want I don't, I don't want to think about that one. Let's think about something. <laughs> Let's think about the you know something else. The Lord is my strength. You know. But it, you know, all of those things. Because we have to know, and we when we go through those things, we have to confess the word of God. We have to confess what the word of God says about my situation, not my problem. He already know I'm going through it. I don't need to keep whining and complaining. I need to confess that I'm coming up out of this. That he is my deliverer. He is my strong tower. He is an ever-present help in a time of trouble. Hallelujah. That I can look to the hills from which come of my help, my help coming about it, coming from the Lord, which may have an earth. And if he may have an earth, he sure can help me with my little situation. So we have to real, that's, that's what we have to you know, we have to really look at that. For more than more than that, God is always, he's always, He's in our future, waiting for us to arrive, waiting for us to get it together, waiting for us to get to the other side. You ain't going to drown. You won't drown. He'll see you through it. Sometimes the waters, the waters may rise a little bit more than we, when we would want them to or we expect them to, but he will get us to the other side. He'll pull us through. He'll throw an anchor out there. Hallelujah. He'll throw a, 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 a what you call it, a, a raft out there for us to grab hold to. Because he had the solution before we even had the problem. He, we, we know, because we do serve an all-knowing God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I thank God for him. Hallelujah. Glory to God that he knows what's best for us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey, Shandari de Asi. Oh, God. That when I think of the goodness of Jesus, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Because if it had not been for God, I don't know where I would be. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I chose to make Him Lord over my life. I chose to follow Him. Yeah, I got off sometimes. Yeah, I got distracted sometimes. But I thank God, hallelujah, that by his grace, I was able to get back on, get back on track. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Hebrews 4 and 12. Glory to God. Oh, God, we serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4, 4 and 12 says, Hallelujah. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discern of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You know, I love this scripture because our soul and our spirit can come into twain at times. But God, the word of God is so precise and it's so sharp that it can cut and separate it. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. The God has given us his word, the graphe word, the, the logos word, so that we can build it into our spirits, 
our joints and the very marrow of our bones. And we can be filled with the living word of God. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Through his whole by his power of his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I thank God. Hallelujah. That he didn't just save us and leave us on our own. Hallelujah. That this word, hallelujah, is our blueprint. Glory to God. It's our map to get us where we have to go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, because he has plans and he has a purpose, but he has things for us to enjoy on this earth while we're here. That people can see how God has blessed you so they can have the faith in the God that you serve. That if he did it for you, he can do it for me. Hallelujah. That's what I, that's what I look at. I see somebody, I ain't jealous about what somebody else got or how they got it. I say, God, you did it for them. You can do it for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That when, and you know, and with, with all of that, Filling us with his word. That when the enemy throws his fiery darts, we can hold up our shield of faith. That and that because that's our confession. That our confession is made. Our shield of faith. That we confess with the word of God. The more we confess, the more confessions we have. Hallelujah. Every time he throw it, he throw a dart. We, we confess the word of God. The stronger our, our shield is enforced by our confession. So we gotta know the word of God. You gotta know what's in here. Just like you got a bank account, you got to just, you keep going and going, putting that card in there. Uh, you got to know, know what you got in there before they say, uh, decline. Know what you got. Know what, what, know what belongs to you. Know that God has given you the authority to use his word. That when you call on the name of Jesus, there's power. That the angels will come because you're his. Because he has made, that you have made him Lord over your life. Lord over your children. Lord over your household. Lord over your money. Lord over your finances. You, Lord over your marriage. You have made him Lord over your life. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his love. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his faith. Hallelujah. New mercies. Thank you, God, for his mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And you're going to go, stay on that. You're going to go to down to Hebrews 4 and 14. Then seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. We can't waver, as I say again, we cannot waver on our confession. Hallelujah. We can't fast confess Jesus on one side of our mouth. And then we confess, we, we confess our weakness, our sickness, our lack, our trouble. No, we can't do that. And then we still don't, we definitely don't need to be confessing Jesus out of one mouth and then cursing out the next, out the same mouth. No, bitterness we cannot flow out the same fountain. No, can't do that. But, but don't, you know, don't pray for one thing. And then when some come up, you confess something else, you don't board out your prayer. If you're praying for, for help, continue regardless of what the doctor say, regardless of the pain you may feel in your body, you still got to say, when it's right, I'm here. You still got to say it. In the midnight hour, when the pain, you know, when you can't sleep, but it's right, I'm here. It hurts, but it's, it's with his stripes, I'm here. I should live to declare the works of the Lord. One night, I was I was having an attack. Don't know what, where it come from this day. Don't know why it happened. I was here all by myself. Everybody was gone. And it felt like an enemy told me, he said, I'm going to kill you. I didn't take that and say, oh, Lord, he gonna kill the devil said he's going to kill me. No, I, I started declaring. The, I said, I should live to declare the works of the Lord. I should live and not die. I am in Christ. I'm here. And it lasted about, I guess, about five to ten minutes. I'm like it lasted for a long time when I was in it. But he left. He won't get me that day. No. And that's what you got to do. When he comes up against your finances, when he comes against your body, when he comes up against your marriage, when he comes against your children, confess the word of God. Focus. Choose to believe that God is able. Choose to believe it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's go to Matthew 10 and 32. Hallelujah. Just got um, two more scriptures after this. We'll be through. Matthew 10 and 30, 32. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Authority 
of the believer's authority in our confession. Hallelujah. Glory to God is not moved. I will find it. Hallelujah. 10 and 32. Glory to God. Be safe. I'm sorry, y'all. 10 and 32 says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, will, uh, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. Now, I like that. Because as we speak the word, as you speak, you and I speak the word of God, Jesus confesses it before the Father because he, what? He is, our, he is the high priest of our confession. Yes. Lord, Lord look at them. They, they speak in your word. They speak in your word. Hallelujah. So when I, when he, when I call on him speak in his word, he got to come. He got to send the angels. Hallelujah. He got to send the angels to, to do to minister to me, to, to do what I'm calling, I'm asking him to do. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Confesses us before the Father. Amen. He's calling Ernestina. Hallelujah. That's me. Oh, yeah. God said, yeah, that's my favorite. That's my favorite daughter. All right. She's confessing his word. All right. Okay. Y'all going to get tired of me saying that, but all right. We're going to move on. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Romans 10. Let's go to Romans 10. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And as you confess his word of God, hallelujah, he's going to say, hallelujah, say the same thing. He's going to say, that's my daughter. That's my son. I got to go see what's, I, I got to tell them, whatever, whatever's coming up against them, I'm going to tell them to stop. I'm going to bind them. Did they have authority to bind them to loose? Hallelujah. And what's it? We bind on earth is bound in heaven. It's loose on earth is loose in heaven. It is already done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It shouldn't be taking place in our lives. God has given us authority with that. He's given us the keys to the, He's given us the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That it shouldn't be taking place. So He's given us that authority. Hallelujah. Oh God. We got to use what God has given us. Stop being frustrated. Stop being discouraged. Use the word of God. Use it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, bless your name, God. Romans 10 and 8. Okay, hallelujah. Yes, God. Oh, there it is. <laughs> but what said thee? Thy word is not thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Though it's, it's in our mouth. It's not thee. It's in us. It can't, you know, if it's in your mouth, it can't get no closer. Hallelujah. And we speak it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then 10 says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thank God. Thank God. That's all we got to do is believe in our heart, confess in our mouth. We don't have, oh, you, ooh, I just thank God. We don't, it's not a tricky test. It's not a, 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 a crazy test. My husband showed me um, something he got off the internet, net, internet for, they used to get these tests to um, black people to to, um, to vote, to see if they can, you know, to get them to see if they can vote. But at the time, they were given this test, but they couldn't read. They couldn't read or write, so but they gave them this test. And it was some of the craziest press questions. One was saying, how many bubbles are in a bar of soap? What? You know? And so, just those, you know, things. But God didn't give us nothing. Like, he didn't give us nothing like that. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. We didn't have to do our own sacrifice. Jesus paid it all. Hallelujah. And I thank God that's all we have to do. That's all we have to do is confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. As believers of God, we must have confidence in our faith. To live victorious. We got to have confidence in our faith. Because God has given us. He said he has given each man the measure of faith. It's not your faith. It's really it's God's faith. But he gives us the responsibility of building up on that whole, on, his, on our most holy faith. It's holy because God gave it to us. And so we have to have confidence in the faith that God has given us. It is the faith that God releases the power of God into our situations, into our circumstances, to deliver us, to set us free, so then we won't have to be in bondage anymore. Amen? We're in bondage because we allow ourselves to be. Hallelujah. And then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 4, the last scripture, 4 and 13. Hallelujah. 
4 and 13. Amen. We having the same spirit of faith, according to it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. Your faith is released by the words you speak. We speak that we speak faith because we believe. So build yourself upon this. As of today, I hope this message was was edifying to you that you build yourself upon your most holy faith. Build your, your confession up that when you hold up the shield, that when the enemy comes against you, you hold up those shields, that shield of faith that is filled with nothing but confessions of God. Hallelujah. God, how he is your deliverer, how he is your way maker, he's your healer, he's your peace, he's your righteousness, he's your sanctification. And know that you have authority as a believer. Amen. Until next time, praise God. Have a blessed and wonderful day. And oh, and don't forget, don't forget, email us. Hallelujah. Walk in victory at sbcglobal.net. And visit our website at victoriouswordchristiancenter.org. And if you love to sow a seed, please, um, we take, we, we have push pay at, you can text BWCC Give at 77977 or you can download load the app and you can also we have cash um cash out um oh god the cash symbol capital v at victoria's word christmas center i mean no nope 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 that's wrong cash out at cash symbol victoria's capital v the victoria's capital w word and if you like our programming our programming our channel Please subscribe, please like, and please share. And if you don't know Christ and you want to make him load over our life, over your life, just just uh, complete, uh, repeat after me. Say, Father God, today I accept Christ and I make him Lord over my life. I thank you for forgiving me for all of my sins. Today I confess with my mouth and I believe with my heart. That Jesus died for my sins. And today, hallelujah, I am made a new creature. That old things are passed away. And all things have become new. And I receive him into my life. And I receive your Holy Spirit. And we thank you once again for joining us. And you have a wonderful and a blessed evening. In Jesus' name, amen. He's a worthy of, worthy of all Somebody can say, I